the guy that started all of this is sitting over here. Colonel Steve Hodges was curious about, what, three or four years ago? And he got me talking, and I haven't stopped talking since. <laughs> uh, the major topic, of course, is my experience at the Nevada Army test site. And what Bob and I have decided on, it's best possibly to show you a film that was done by a young um, young man uh, from the Netherlands, and it's entitled The Atomic Soldiers. It is a documentary film done about three years ago where he interviewed uh, veterans of Operation Plum Bob, which took place in 1957 in the Nevada deserts, Camp Desert Rock to be specific. Uh, Operation Plum Bob consisted of 24 above ground nuclear weapons. At the time, there had been less than 100 nuclear, nuclear explosions in the world. Um, there are, have now been currently well over 2,000 nuclear explosions. So we have a short film of the documentary, wherein uh, the producer Morgan Bibby um, spoke to about seven or eight of us. And what's most important when, after the introduction of this, if we could all get over towards the side there, you can see the video a lot better. I would offer this to you. As you watch the film, please take note of the faces and the comments of these men who in 1957 witnessed atom uh, an atomic bomb. All but one of them only saw one. One other gentleman in there saw more, th more than one. Uh, he may have seen as many as I did. I saw eight mm. atomic, uh, atomic bombs uh, ranging in size, in my case, from 10 kilotons, mega, megatons, not kil, uh, get it backwards, 10 kiloton, 10,000 tons to 77 or 74,000 tons, 74 kT, and have been as close as a mile and a half from the 74 kiloton shot. So, uh, to explain what an atomic blast is, it's more than what you see in film. If you could take a look outside and just look out there and imagine that whole sky, the whole vision that you see is nothing but white, brighter by a thousand times than the sun. So bright that if you held your hand and put the meat of your, your hand to your eyes and your back to the blast that you could see the bones in your hands and the bones in the person in front of you. That's how bright the light was. The sound, if you're 10, 10 miles away, you could watch the ground come towards you as the dust rolls off the desert and then you're hit by a shock wave and knocked on your butt. Then you, you look at the formation of the atomic cloud, the mushroom, and you see some of the most amazing colors that you've ever seen as the cap of the cloud is formed. You stand in awe of what you've seen and it isn't until later that you wonder what you've seen. The first reaction of most people as the blast goes off is, oh my God, and other phrases like that. It's a wonder. It lives with you forever. 
It affects your life forever. And I don't know, Bob, if you don't mind now, Bob and I met last March at the, uh, at we the golf tournament. We met last March at the, can everybody hear me? I've got a big mouth, so. <laughs> we met last March at the golf tournament and I heard the story and I was amazed. And one of the things that really affected me was the fact that, and I'm sure you might, I don't want to steal your thunder, but Go. for 50 years, None of these individuals could even talk to their mother, their father, their wives, their spouses, their kids, and tell them what happened and the experience that they had. Because if they did, it was treason. They could end up in jail or they could end up with what was the fine? $10,000 or $10,000 10. fine. So they, they had to remain quiet about this. And when you see the picture, uh, the video, and you see the faces of some of these individuals, and you'll see after all these years how it still affects them. Uh, I think you'll agree it, uh, it was a tragedy. I mean, I think the video, I'm not sure if you'll see it, but they were the human guinea pigs is what they were. Uh, thank you. Well, to, to add to that point, uh, we'll take questions after. Um, but uh, the thing of it is that we were told not to have children for 10 years. Mm. My son was born two months before the 10th anniversary of my last shot. This was after a couple of miscarriages. I never told my wife the whole story because up until 1995, we were held to the Secrecy Act. Uh, until Bill Clinton lifted that band on the day that O.J. Simpson verdict came up. So I didn't even know that it had been lifted for years and years after. Um, in addition to that, that band um, on secrecy, um, there have been virtually no compensation or recognition of line of duty for any of the illnesses, uh, except in, uh, until 50 years later, in, in about 2000, when uh, the Agent Orange bill came out, recognizing Agent Orange as a line of duty, they also included the radiation uh, veterans as a category. So that uh, if perhaps I caught one of eight different kinds of cancer, I might be compensated to the tune of $75,000 if I were still alive. That, that was the whole thing. May I ask if anybody here um, served with atomic weapons in the 60s and, and 70s in the 60s? Uh, Davy Crockett? No, I was a nuclear special weapons delivery pilot off the aircraft carrier and three squadron. We all had atomic bombs assigned to us and we had to go and study the route and, uh, and learn how to set it up. What, uh, what airplane did you use? A4. A4s? 2,000 pound shape and they told us that the yield, if we went to a certain number, then I'm glad that, I'm not getting that as a classified area, but- uh, It's no longer classified. Uh, yeah, well, we uh, we actually, they say, okay, you, you have a 10 kiloton uh, weapon, so you go to number three. If you want, you're gonna assign this target, and you go to number four, so it's a dial, and it's just a dial in your yield. You okay, yes, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That, that was a uranium bomb where you, you could dial it in. Yes. Um, so 10 kiloton was the smallest I saw. Yes. yes, sir. I worked on Project Wigwam, which was the first that was the early test of a nuclear weapon off the, off the coast of California back in 55. That was an atomic ante. Sorry? Was not atomic ante. That was the first uh, 
Gun. The search, the search underwater test. Oh, underwater. Underwater Under, okay. test of a nuclear weapon. They, I saw the photographs of it later. I was on the surface support activity. But they had the weapon at a thousand, two thousand feet below sea level. And the craft that carried it, which we nicknamed USS Migraine, had <laughs> <laughs> got a hole in the well deck so it could be lowered down to the appropriate depth. And then um, there's a lot to it, but they detonated that uh, nuclear weapon underwater. And when last seen, the remains of the USS Migraine were approaching a thousand feet above sea level. <laughs> I got what happened after that in, in uh, during uh, Operation Plum Bottom. They did the same thing. They they dug a uh, a a, 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 a shaft, yeah. and they put a, a thousand pound or a, a, a ton, 2,000 pound iron plate over a, I think it was a five or seven foot tunnel uh, yeah. shaft. <laughs> and they put the high speed cameras that they use for the, the, the rockets and all. The bomb appeared in one frame the estimated speed of the the plate was over 4,000 miles an hour. They either they said it's either in orbit or it burned up on the way, and that was it. That was the one underground shot. Did you witness the brightness or or the the sound of the explosion? We we did. Project Wigwam, we had you know, a, a whole array of, of uh, vessels, including the one that they suspended the bomb from that one vessel. And as I say, uh, the, the, the vessel that the small, small ship that lowered the bomb into the water. When it went off, I saw the photographs and that remains of the vessel were a thousand feet in the air. And, and also, by the way, the Navy personnel probably suffered more radiation and exposure problems than, than did the Army and, and the service because all the shots, uh, Wigwam and the shots at Bikini and, and all with the radioactive water uh, and being above ground, above, on the ship that became somewhat uh, pelted with all the radioactive materials. Uh, commanders, uh, it, it was just devastating the amount of disease and everything else that the Navy suffered. They suffered more than that the army did, and at, at Plum Bob there were somewhere in the neighborhood of four thousand military personnel that witnessed Plum Bob. So listen, um, we'll take questions after, if you don't mind. But in order to see what what my companions have seen, if you wouldn't mind making a theater over <coughs> over this way, we'll get the film going. It's a 14 minute film uh, documentary. And then the closer you get, the better. I have better to say, 